Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a No Man's Sky tutorial. Today I'm going to be taking you through the basics of power. I've got a more advanced tutorial incoming showing you how you can make some more complex logic gates. No Man's Sky power can be pretty simple, especially the very start in machinery that you're going to be using. But eventually when you want to make more sophisticated things, you are definitely going to need a little bit more help. And I spent a good few hours live streaming today trying to test and find stuff out. Big shout out to all the rat bags that helped me work out a lot of the mechanics. So if you like my No Man's Sky tutorials, go and check out the other ones I've done. And make sure you look out for my Let's Play coming soon. Don't forget to like and let's crack on. So I'm doing the rest of this in creative mode just for ease and convenience, but you've seen how you unlock some of the stations that you need, particularly the bioreactor fuel. If you haven't got the blueprints required, go and visit the anomaly and that's where you'll find it. You should also be able to find these on a space station and possibly in your actual uh, synthesizer or what used to be the blueprint synthesizer, which is now the construction analysis. Head to the construction modules tab and you should see the biofuel reactor that unlocks all the rest of the gear that you need. You are going to have to spend some of the data pad points that you've accumulated. They're then little red squares that float around in little plants. Grab some of them and you should be able to get the full suite of stuff. Also the floor pads or the floor switch will come in handy for certain things but that's going to be a bit more advanced. But definitely make sure you get at least the biofuel unlocked. When it comes to powering up your base, you'll notice that a lot of your base parts might be now black and you've got these great big red lightning symbols. Obviously you need to power it up. Now there's a few ways you can actually set up your bases to be powered, but you are definitely going to need the biofuel reactor first. In your construction research unit, you should be able to find it once you've unlocked it and it'll be under the base teleport module. You're going to need one metal plate in and 40 oxygen. And if you happen to have not unlocked the base teleport module itself, You'll also need four platings for that, two carbon nanotubes and 40 sodium. Now these are pretty low level power supplies. You are going to need to switch it up if you've got quite big bases. To power up your furnace tank, you're going to need a lot of carbon. This is why they don't make very good power supplies. You need quite a lot of these to keep running big bases. So you're quickly going to need other items to help you get more power. But to start off with, go ahead and fill it up with carbon. As you can see, I've got about an hour running on one big full tanker. If you have one of these inside your base, it will automatically power it up. But then you've got to look out to make sure that your base isn't too big and that the power output isn't as great as what's generating. You can see at the moment, everything that's in this small section of my base is using up around 11 killer pules. Who knows? and there's an availability of 50. So this furnace powers up to 50. That's one quick, easy way to power up bits of your base that you're really desperate to get going. I've been testing and mucking around with some other stuff. You can see I've got more base sections. Watch what happens when I connect the rest of this base up. You'll notice the power has gone off. That's because I need 66 KP and this only outputs 50. So to get the remaining, I'm going to either need another biofuel reactor or I could start thinking about other ways to power up my base. Now, one of the best ways is to make sure you have plenty of batteries. Now, batteries will store up any excess power that you've got going. One best ways to get extra power is by using solar panels. You want to have a good bank of these lying around. And once you do, you need to start connecting them up to your battery or you can run them directly to your bases if you need extra power. Obviously it's night time at the moment, so while we're waiting for that, let's start connecting everything up. You've got wiring which is free, it doesn't cost any resources to make. If we connect them up like this, and then run one to our generator, you'll notice that since I've removed that part piece of the base, I'm actually generating extra power that's going into the battery. It gives you exact timing of how long it's going to be until it's charged fully, and it's roughly charging 39 kp per second. You can do the same and connect it all together, but instead of having multiple wires everywhere, you can run it across each other like that. And you can see that both of them are now gaining and gathering extra energy. So if you ever have a biogenerator running, always try and make sure you've got a battery running as well, just to store any excess. Now the solar panels have started opening up and they are also generating power, but we're not doing anything with it. You can see they are generating 50 kp too. So let's actually put this together and let's add this to the battery network. And once again, you can just go ahead and connect them all up in one single line 
and the flow will just keep transferring. By doing that now, we've got over 200 kp available. So solar panels, in conjunction with your batteries, they're going to be the best way to power up your base. For some reason, if it's never daytime on your planet, then you will definitely need to invest a little bit more in the biofuel and be really efficient. There's ways that you can turn off the power that generates in your base as well. And I'm going to be showing you all of that too. Now if we take a look at the biofuel reactor, you can see its usage is around 200 kp. So it's got a whole total. Now let's pull that base part back and see if it operates and runs the rest of the base. You can see we've got no red lightning symbols, it's all blue. So we've got power running through the whole base now. For sure, if you've got old saves with big bases, if you're having any sort of problem with lots of the areas being dark, but it does say you've got enough, take one section out and replace it that connects it all. Hopefully this will fix any problems or issues you, that have been coming up. So I've taught you how to get the very basics going, but what can you really do with this? Other than just power up your machines and your base and the lights, there are some nifty things you can do with switches. With your electrical wiring, make sure you're using your batteries rather than your generators directly. And you can start connecting it to switches and other circuits that you've placed. And this is how you can make sure that you're not overusing any power while you're doing missions, just by simply turning off a lot of the things that you don't need. This is pretty ugly having these wires around. So far, there's no way to hide them. You're going to really have to think about where and how you place them. But you can see I've got my battery running. It's keeping power up to the rest of the base. And what I've got on here is a wall switch. By connecting it and then connecting the wires to the actual power supply for the door, we can simply make a simple open and close mechanism. So let's show you quickly how that happens. If you go to power and industry and then find and then find power and then switches, you've got a few different options. We're going to add a wall switch to the outside so that we can literally just open and close this door. It can be a little bit buggy here and there where you place it all, so pay attention as you're placing the wires. If there's no power at all, it will be red, and if it's all powered up, it should be blue. So let's connect the switch. So once you've got your switch connected to the door, then go ahead and connect it to your power supplies. And that is pretty much how you make a very basic switch for your doors if you don't happen to have any of the holographic ones. You can open it, you can close it. And it's not too taxing how you turn on and off. I've got various different lights running here. And at the back, I've got another biofuel reactor. And you can see I've just connected it directly up. So if you always want something running, that's how you do it. And if you take away that power cable, you can clearly see the lights have gone off. Inverters change or interrupt the flow of the power, so they can be useful for a bunch of different things. Amongst the switches, you've also got a proximity switch, and we're gonna use that with the inverter just to show what you can do with this. First off, let's place it down. Let's run a cable to the generator and then run another cable to one of these blocks. Since it's a proximity switch, when I get closer, the J lights up. Step away, and the J goes dark. I've got three connections here. If we get rid of them two seconds, and now we put a proximity switch just near maybe where my entrance is, then start connecting it back up. You can see my base is all powered up. But as soon as I step away, the base goes dark. So if you're worried about using too much energy, make sure you're using one of the proximity switches. Nice, super easy, super simple. Now you can set some of these proximity switches all in and around your base so that every single part you're going in, this won't happen. And your power doesn't drop just because you're moving around your base, especially if you've got big bases. All you have to do is just put even more proximity switches in and around. It's usually around a 360 degree field of effect around each one. So just find somewhere pretty discreet for them. If you really don't want the wires making your base look awful, you can actually just place the wires conveniently in and around. So rather having them crisscrossing your whole base, 
can simply do it like this. It takes a bit of extra time, but it does mean that your base isn't going to become an eyesore. You guys, I'm sure, can do a better job of me of hiding it all. So just make sure that any of the proximity switches, you are connecting it to certain parts in and around your base. And that is just one idea how you can actually keep your base on and off while you're doing certain jobs and saving energy. Of course, you can just manually put a switch in so it will turn off the power for the whole base as you leave. And that will just require one of the wall switches, which can be placed on the floor or pretty much anywhere you want. I've just used the example of the proximity just because I think it's a pretty cool idea if you want it to come on automatically without you having to do anything at all. But obviously it does require a lot more work than just plonking one switch to your power batteries. You can see my batteries are now pretty much full. They're not being drained at the moment because I've got not anything in my base using them. But as soon as I step a bit closer, and the base starts powering up, you can see they're starting to drain. Now there are a bunch of other switches here. As I mentioned earlier, we've got something called a power inverter. This is a little bit more complex, and I definitely needed the help of Stream to help me work this one out. I've got myself another door. And you can pretty much see it's always open. If you want that to be closed, you can use the switches, or you can build something a little bit more complex. Right now the power state of this door is open. If I decide to use the proximity switch and then power it up to the door and then to a generator, you'll notice you'll have the problem that as you're further away the door's open but when you get closer the door shuts. So if you want to be greeted with an open door every time you arrive at your base, here's how you can do that. We're going to use one of the inverters, pop this down, connect the wires up, but make sure you're always putting it into the green side of the inverter. Then this middle section here, pop that onto your proximity detection, and on the red side of the inverter, you're going to connect that to the door. Now you can see it's going a little bit mad at the moment because I've got two pieces of current going towards the door and that's how you can pretty much have blinking lights. So we're going to get rid of that wire. Now we've got to connect the other side of the proximity detector to a power supply. And you've created your own little welcome doorway. Just like that. It's a small thing, but I'm sure you guys, once you get the hang of this, you can use it in a lot of different items. But it's pretty cool to have a proximity working that it opens doors like these, rather than always having to use the holographic doors or use switches to open and close them. I'm not very good at some of this stuff. Logic gating and redstone from Minecraft, I used to love seeing what could be built, but I never really got my head fully around it. But you can see here the power is being interrupted, the proximity is giving the signal and when it does it's sending a signal to the door to either open or to close. You can see I've got this one set up like this here and it opens up nicely as you're walking through. There is no interaction with either the inverter or the proximity switch. You have got buttons. Now buttons can be good, but the flip side or downside of buttons of course is if you're using them just bog standard like this, they'll open and shut something, but only very quickly. I'm sure you guys are going to come up with something more to do with buttons. Likewise, I'm going to be researching a lot and testing a few things out to see what more advanced features and techniques we can use. The same goes for the auto switch. They're stuff that pretty much for the basics of power, you don't necessarily need to know too much about right now. You can purchase a floor switch as well. You need to go to the Nexus or the Anomaly and you'll find it under a construction trader or the construction uh, module. And obviously this gives a power supply out or in. There might even be ways to hook this up to a lander. So as soon as your ship lands on your base, the whole of your base will start coming alive with power. 
Now in the power section, you can see there are some other stuff that we haven't really talked about. We've got the electric magnetic generator, the short range teleporter, and if you look under industrial, we've got a bunch of extractors that can be used, but they all have to be powered up. We've also got some extra bells and whistles with noise boxes to go alongside the light. And these pretty much work how you think they will. Plunk one down. Connect it up and it will start making a tone. You can change the tone. just like that and you could create yourself a nice little orchestra and if you set it directly with something that pulses like I've made here with the inverter you can also get pulsating noises I will show you exactly how these all work as well but that's going to be my next advanced tutorial hopefully by then I've worked out some cool ideas that you can try as well let me know what you kind of want to do with this is it going to take you half a year to resupply your whole base? Are you going to be going mad, absolutely filling your biofuel generators with carbon? So to recap, grab a biofuel reactor blueprint. Once learned, make sure you've got some batteries. As soon as possible, move over to solar panels and make sure that you've got plenty of batteries to keep hold of all your charges. Test and muck around with different ways of supplying your base. Not forgetting that if you do have a biofuel generator in here, any items that require power will automatically be powered up without the need for messy cables. That goes for batteries too, as long as you've got it linked to one of the power outlets. Experiment with the different switches, play around with some of the light boxes and the sound modules too, and get ready as we start talking about how you can get unlimited power. I am JPG. If this video has helped you out, make sure you like it. And I'll see you, Ratbags, for another No Man's Sky tutorial soon.